Good evening, everyone. Hopefully, everyone's having a festive holiday season and filled with trains of all kinds. So, speaking of trains, we've got a model in front of us here, and I'll be doing another unboxing. And uh, hopefully, I'm going to make this the same way as I did the last time, where I do an unboxing, a test run, then a montage of its restoration, and then a run after it's been completed, a review, and finally, some run buys. So, let's go ahead and get started here. Let's see the best way to get this. There we go down here. At the very least, it's got a lift here. Did that do it? Let's see. Uh, close enough. I don't think I'll be using this box again. Oh, well, that's nice. Nice and convenient. Yes, it's a Mantua 060T. And uh, while I'm doing all this, I'll take a look a little bit later on to see when this was released so I can make a better, accurate review. All right, here it is. Look at that thing. And uh, the reason I got this is because this is a chunky locomotive. It has got some weight. Uh, wheels don't look too bad. Yeah, it's got a little bit of uh, some foam on it. Yeah, this is a locomotive I kind of had interest in just because it's a heavy, heavy die cast. Locomotive. That's something kind of hard to find in a, a tank engine. There's several variations out there. Not really a whole lot on the market right now, but uh, you have, there's quite a bit out there, but uh, most of them are plastic and they're light and they're fairly weak, lower quality. But I like this just because of how heavy it is. All right, here is the 060 straight out of the box, and let's see how it runs. I heard something. It hummed for a little bit. Not sure how much it spun, but uh, not being very responsive. Let's see how it is in reverse. Yeah, this isn't uh, looking good. It's the first time I've had a locomotive that actually uh, doesn't move at all. Which makes uh, a project all the more fun. As long as the motor isn't dead. Alright, getting started here. I'm trying to find the perfect screw to kind of take the shell off. It's obviously I want to get to the mechanics of the locomotive and then uh, clean actually the body itself. And uh, from other Mantua models, and even a lookalike to this, which we'll get a little bit later, it's very different. There is no screw that obviously goes in the smokestack. And hopefully it's an easy uh, this assembly. See the right kind of screw. I mean, yeah, these wheels don't look too bad. They look... Uh, I mean, I'm always going to clean it, even if it's uh, at this point. It could always be a little bit better. But you don't know. Oh, that was pretty easy. I figured, uh, when was the last time this was maintained? The time someone worked on it. All right, let's see if this does it. Oh, yeah. And it looks like these things back here. There you go. Ah. That was very easy. Look at that. Easy access to the motor. Oh, this would be so much easier to clean. I put that aside. Yeah, this is uh it's a little bit shiny on the inside here. I wonder that any lubricants are in there or not. Doesn't look too bad. 
But yeah, I really want to clean this up. Okay, I'll put that aside. Yeah, motor spins. From what I can tell, I don't think uh, the gear is cracked. Alright, time to uh, further this disassembly process. It's not the most fun when you get the cylinders out and the running gear gets kind of out of whack. And even as simple as something like this, it can still be a little bit tedious. And honestly, that's probably the worst part about this because the shell is easy to take off and it has no wires. Yeah. This is uh, my least favorite thing about that, but uh, otherwise, this should be easy access, yeah. So what I'm going to do is yeah, clean out the commutator, maybe these brushings, maybe I'll use a little cleaning. Yeah, that warm gear, it's a little dirty, yeah, I could clean that off, but uh, it's not too bad. Honestly, I don't see what's why this wouldn't run. Maybe it's shorted out somewhere, but uh, I really feel like I can get this to operation. All right, I'll get back to you guys in a little bit. All right, I am back. Now, this thing is not done yet. I only put the shell back on after I cleaned out the worm gear, the commutators and uh, give that area some lubrication. Let me tell you something. The most frustrating part, as I predicted, is not uh, anything, uh, whether you're cleaning it or disassembly. It's trying to get the cylinders aligned with the running gear. It has to be perfect. I don't care if this is a simple, very easy to work on locomotive with a about as basic as this can get. This is very annoying. I'm trying to get these slotted in uh, you know, right there on each side. Make sure these are lined up. It was frustrating. It took over an hour just for that. However, once I finally did, that's when I decided to uh, give the lubrication. It was pretty easy. Very simple. Now it's uh, time to clean the wheels and uh, polish these up a little bit. These are already really good. Now when I was uh, cleaning up everything, I noticed that, yeah, the uh, motor is not seized up or anything. I mean, there was a little bit of gunk on that uh, worm gear, but it really wasn't that bad. I have no doubt in my mind that... You know, this thing can run again. It's got pretty much has everything connected. There's nothing broken, nothing loose. So now the probably the most difficult part's out of the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean this and uh I'll come back to you guys in a little bit. Alright, I am back. Alright, the cleaning and polishing was very quick because this uh, already looked really good. But now it's uh, it's all lubricated. It's even a little bit cleaner. Yeah, everything on this model mechanically looks really good. I know that this will run. This is just too good. And uh, now that it's all done, let's give it a nice little test. There we have it. This is at 45.
before I go any slower. I forget the uh, what it is. I can't think of the name on the top of my head, but there's a distinct smell you get <laughs> with an open frame motor and all those contacts. It gives us a, it's pretty distinct. Nothing harmful, but just a foul smell. Oh yeah. Here we are at uh, 32. That looks good. Nice and smooth. Alright, let's uh, get forward again and see what we can do about that. Alright, this is a little above 20 on the throttle. This is really nice. For what it is, it's a nice quiet motor. And I'm very, very happy with this outcome. Okay, that concludes the test. It's a success. And uh, even though it's uh, cosmetically a little bit rough looking, I am very, very happy with this. This is exactly what I wanted when I wanted to pick up a, a cheap project model. Very, very happy about that. Okay, now it's time to get on to the review and then uh, I'll give some run bys. Okay, this is the Mantua 060T known as Little Six. Big Six is an 060 with a tender. So the Little Six here was introduced uh, sometime in the mid-1950s to the early 60s as a die-cast kit. So this paint scheme is not from the factory. This is someone's custom work. And it comes with uh, you know, the nice die cast body, it has a five pole open frame motor. And uh, at the time, these are some pretty nice wheels with the flanges. I'm not going to guarantee that they can go on code 70 track, but they could definitely do code 83. Now, what's interesting about this is the uh, arrangement of the 060. You have a fairly wide gap here between the front and center section of wheels. It's pretty nice to have that as an advantage so you can have a larger motor in there and the worm goes all the way to the front set of wheels. I'm almost thinking that anytime I see an 060 it's usually the center wheels that have the gear on it. Now this is also pretty familiar for those who have later rendition because parts of this have uh, carried on to another generation of models. Mantua, with this particular shell and same wheel arrangement, have re-released this in the mid early mid-1980s as a ready-to-run model. And I'm unsure of the upgrades, but honestly, if they would have kept it as is, but at a headlight, that would be perfectly fine. Now they also actually made another 060 with the same structure here, but uh, they added a different shell to it. I'm not sure when that initially came out, but uh, later when Model Power bought Mantua, they put it out in the Mantua Classics. I actually do have one of those as a model. Unfortunately, it's somewhere deep in my storage. But uh, let me give you guys a little bit of a video of that. So I uh, wasn't terribly satisfied with it. It's not a bad locomotive, but that is the reality. It just keeps derailing like that. 
Now it's very interesting because uh, I'm not quite sure what that is uh, based off of that shell. And I'm also not quite sure what uh, locomotive this is supposed to be based off of exactly. I mean, I guess when you have a side tank with uh, Stevenson valve gear and also has a uh, superheating it could be a generic 06 so I'm not sure I'm really uh, not too familiar with this in realistic form but as far as a model I've seen this before and not just as an 06 so but uh, one of my first switching locomotives is an 040 this has the same body style let me see if I can get a good rendition of that, yeah. Looking at everything, it's uh, very similar. There's also just one additional air pump. It, uh, yeah, it's got a different bit of uh, where they made this running you here, but this time you have an 040 rather than an 060. And the gear is on the rear set, different motor, it's a closed, but very low end, cheap motor right there. For someone who is uh, interested in uh, getting a smaller switcher locomotive, I would highly recommend this one as well as the later run which I think is 1978 to the mid 80s 060 because uh, not only do you have lighting for that one but it's already painted and probably in the scheme you might be interested in because these are very impressive. Um, even though this is a relic in technology, this proves why older locomotives going back 60 years, they're just, they're tanks, they're solid. And I'm glad to see that Mantua carried that on right up to the end of their time in 2001. Because uh, nothing like a die-cast body, nothing like a big strong motor in there. This has all the advantages that you want out of a switcher. Because in this day and age, most of what we have for a switcher is uh, generally something light, plastic, and probably not as precise in its performance. There have been some out there that are, are of good quality, but uh, they can fetch a price and they're getting hard to find as well. Yeah, absolutely love this. I absolutely recommend this to anyone who can get their hands on one. It's a wonderful model, and even when you do initially find one and it doesn't run, chances are, as long as the motor isn't completely seized up, you can easily get this thing to run again. Well, that pretty much concludes uh, my review and my thought about this locomotive. So I'm going to give this a little bit of a run by, and I'm not going to install couplers on this, so it's just going to be running by itself. But uh, you'll get to see just how nice it is on the rails. So that's pretty much all, and uh, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.